Hey guys, so I'm wanting to give an update on this uh, spectrometer that I've been working on. Um, I finally got it for the most part done. Um, it you know lights lights up a sample. How it works, or you just drop that in here, and the light passes through the sample, comes through the the slit here, and then eventually hits the diffraction grating, and then is picked up by the camera. I've got the scale taped off. Uh, it's it was good to use to calibrate the system with, um, but after that the lines in the scale can start giving you false readings, so it's got to be covered up past that. Uh, you'll notice a lot of this, I, I use this aluminum foil tape. It is awesome. It doesn't let any light through or anything like that, and uh, I pretty much keep it on hand just as much as I do duct tape or electrical tape, because it's just that useful. Um, but here I have the light ballast hooked up to a power block, and uh, this runs to my bench top, and then the camera plugs in via USB here. Uh, now I did run into a problem. Um, the light bulb that I bought that I thought was a xenon bulb is not a xenon bulb, or if it is, it's a mercury xenon bulb. Um, when I fired this thing up, I was trying to get it calibrated to a xenon bulb, and I had nothing but issues. And after doing a lot of research, it turns out that the spectra that comes from this bulb is a mercury bulb. Um, I don't know if that is because that is the way all xenon headlights are made, or if that is because I bought cheap Chinese knockoffs. Um, but either way, I need to look into getting a proper bulb. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up to my computer and show you guys what the spectra looks like that comes from this. Um, I've got three samples loaded up here in my little test tube holder. I've got copper sulfate, I've got sodium chloride, and cobalt chloride. Now this is the watered down version of cobalt chloride. If it's in an acidic environment, it's really dark blue and I tried to use that. But it was just too dark and this thing didn't quite produce enough light for me to get any sort of spectra reading. But the spectra reading doesn't really matter anyway because the spectral lines from the mercury in the bulb overpower everything else. And I can't get a good reading on anything beyond that. But either way, I'll go ahead and get it hooked up and fire it up and show you guys what it's like. Now here's some footage of what the camera sees as it's looking through the spectrometer. You'll see that flash of light as the bulb turns on, and then you'll see it slowly getting brighter as the bulb warms up. Um, and this right away, I started to realize, is not a xenon bulb. As you see these spectral lines, um, they don't line up where they should be. They should be over there in the red. Uh, this, sh this camera should be able to pick fairly decently up you know, into the infrared, um, and you see no real lines there. Um, all of the lines that you see here usually correspond with either a metal halide or a mercury bulb. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it into the program that I use called RSpec to get a better look at it. Now, if you don't, if you've never heard of this program, it's a decent program. Uh, if you're looking to build your own spectrometer, this will certainly work for you. Although it's more tailored to astronomy spectroscopy. Um, which isn't a bad thing, but it, it still works just fine for what I'm going to use it for. And you'll see in here, where the, into the red and infrared, um, that there is almost no spectral lines where I would expect them. All of the rest are in the mercury vapor zone. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in some copper sulfate. And you'll see it does absorb whatever is left of the red spectra, uh, but there wasn't really enough there for it to make any difference or be able to see anything. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and drop in the copper sulfate, or I'm sorry, the uh, cobalt chloride. And you'll see that it does boost the red spectrum a bit, uh, even further into the infrared. Um, but as you can see, the mercury lines there are way too overpowering. So I'm going to have to find a replacement bulb, hopefully for cheaper than $800. And then I'll upload another video and just show you guys front to back how to build one of these yourself.